Welcome back to my walkthrough for Resident Evil Remastered, my friends. This is part number 6 and in this segment we are going to leave the mansion once again and we will go ahead and explore the caves. Make sure you take the crank and the battery with you, since you'll need both. And also have your shotgun ready. And if you want to save up some time, even though you don't necessarily need to carry it now, you can also go ahead and take the grenade launcher with the acid rounds with you or the magnum, that's up to you. But we will have a boss fight in this segment and that's why either the grenade launcher or the magnum are a must. So the first thing that we need to do is head back towards the residence, towards the courtyard of the residence so that we can set up the battery which will activate the elevator and after we do that we are going to use the crank to refill the tank with water and once we do that we can head towards the caves because right now that path is blocked I'm going to shoot these dogs right here because unfortunately and there's one more coming so let me just wait for him to get on the screen come on come on puppy there we go oh, and that was a close call but no harm done but like I was saying I, I had to dispose of these dogs because unfortunately once I come back from the elevator it's there's a very narrow path and it's a little bit tricky to dodge the dogs in in that area so that's why I decided to finally finish them off be careful here because snakes will come out but you can easily dodge them and you won't have to pass through this area again so you're fine but that's why I decided to shoot the dogs it would just be a little bit tricky to dodge all of them it's possible no doubt but I have ammo to spare at this point so no harm done even though I don't really like to shoot the dogs and now I'm going to dispose of this one as well just so that I can place the battery calmly and head back upstairs. Now like I said what we're going to do is once again go back around and we're going to use the crank to refill the tank with water and that will grant us access to the caves. For the most part the caves aren't a really hard section of the game but it's very easy to get lost in them in my opinion. They've expanded the caves a lot in the remake and as such sometimes you can get a little bit confused with the place that you need to go to since it is a little bit of a maze like area. So it's not even the enemies that we need to worry about even though there are a few enemies in the caves yeah, but it's mostly the fact that sometimes we can just kind of get lost in there but I'll be sure to guide you through them and hopefully you won't have any problems now once again we're going back down the elevator and we will enter the caves and what am I doing here? there we go So like I said in the caves there, there are a few puzzles that we need to solve, nothing too complicated, but it does, the caves do involve a lot of going back and forth, which can be a little bit annoying, but for the most part, like I said, it's a fairly simple section. So we're going to head through this door right here. The first thing that we need to do is collect a, a crank which will grant us access to another part of the caves. So just head through this door. In this room there are two handgun magazines. If you are playing on the normal difficulty, I believe in the true survival difficulty you can find some magnum rounds there actually. Here you can find two handgun magazines but you don't need them. So might as well just let them be. 
Is that you, Jill? Is that voice Enrico's? Yeah? You're alive! Stop! Are you with anybody, Jill? No, but why? <sighs> the stars are finished. Someone is a traitor. Umbrella shut us up. <laughs> Enrico! Traitor? Who? Jill is a little bit oblivious, isn't she? I mean... Even if you don't have any knowledge of the plot of this game, who would you think is the traitor at this point? I doubt anyone would think it's Barry, but oh well. So if you examine this crank, you can see that it has a peculiar shape to it. So don't mix it up with the other crank. In fact, we don't need the other crank, so I'm going to dispose of it. There, there is a hunter who comes inside the room as you leave this area, but as you can see, you have plenty of time to dodge him. You see, the secret to the hunters is that they always scream before they attack you, and while they're screaming, they can't attack you, so that gives you plenty of time to, to escape them. So if you have that knowledge in mind, then the hunters all of a sudden will be a lot easier to deal with. These two, however, we are going to use my shotgun here. So let's shoot them down. Oh boy. You shall not pass. There we go. So I could have used my magnum here since a little bit further on I am going to find a few magnum bullets, but I have plenty of shotgun shells to spare. So if you're feeling more confident with the magnum, you can use the magnum here. However, the shotgun works just as well and you should be able to shoot them down before they get too close to you. And by doing this method I just saved a little bit of magnum ammunition because as you can see I have plenty of shotgun shells. In fact I'm going to be collecting a little bit more shotgun shells a little bit further on. So this is why we need the hexagonal crank. We need to turn this thing around so that we can pass and now we're going to head towards the other room and we're going to approach this boulder right here and get ready to run here comes the boulder you have to make it to the side quickly otherwise you get well pressed Where's Chris when you need him, right? And now if you go back to the place where the boulder came from, there's a few shotgun shells that you can pick up. So, the ammunition that I used to kill the dogs and the hunters, I've already recovered it, so no harm done. And now as we step into this door, have your grenade launcher prepared either the grenade launcher or the magnum but the acid rounds if you have a few of them left use them here because they work really nicely oh I know some of you aren't happy with this but the black tiger which is the name of the huge spider is actually very easy to deal with it moves very slowly and five acids Five acid round shots are enough to finish it off. Now quickly get out of the room. If you don't leave the room then spiders will keep attacking you. Again with those of you with arachnophobia I hope that you've overcame your fears by now. As you can see the black tiger is easy to deal with. And now when you come back to the room, ta-da! The black spider is mysteriously gone. It dissolved rather quickly, if I do say so myself. But now we're going to use the survival knife to gain access to the other area. You can actually head inside this room with the survival knife that you have at the start of the game. And you can actually pass to the other room without killing the black tiger. It's optional, you don't have to kill the black tiger. But I recommend that you do so because it takes a little bit to cut down the webs 
and in the meantime the black spider will most likely attack you not to mention that you'll have to deal with the other smaller spiders so I do think it's a good idea to take it down either with the magnum or the grenade launcher the magnum fires a little bit more quickly so it has that advantage but it takes five shots of either weapon to, to finish the black tiger off you just need to be careful with the other spiders that are walking around in the ceiling and that eventually can jump down but if you leave the area and come back all of them disappear so that makes your, li your life a lot easier we need to use the crank three times here and here comes the boulder and now we're going to dodge to the side to escape it there's a first aid box which contains a first aid spray in the place where the boulder came from but I don't need it but if you guys want feel free to go ahead and pick it up and now we need to solve this puzzle it's fairly similar to the puzzle of the original Resident Evil game we need to push this statue four times and now we're going to use the crank and that will make part of the wall move forward pushing the statue forward as well after we do that what we're going to do is drag the statue onto that into that circular platform that you see and as the statue is placed on it it's going to turn to the side and then we need to push the statue out of the platform so let's do it oh boy oh goodness this camera angle still get to me it's just been such a long time since I played the game with fixed camera angles like this and now we're going to push back the statue onto the platform so it will turn around once again and now all that we need to do is drag the statue away from the rotating platform and uh, thanks for that and now we're going to drag it forward towards that hole in the wall that you see I might not have it perfectly placed yet I might have to drag it to the side a little bit more yeah I need to do that so let's do this then drag it to the side a little bit and it will fit perfectly hopefully there we go and as a reward we get the cylinder so now we need to backtrack back to the area before we found Enrico and we're going to attach the cylinder to a, a shaft and that will allow us to use the elevator to move towards the next area Enrico by the way I don't know how the guy made it in here to be honest unless he came from the lab and then reached the the caves but then again in this version of Resident Evil you can't access the lab through the caves you access the lab through the mansion so I don't know how he was able to hide here but nonetheless he made it here but aside from Rebecca now all Bravo team members are dead Enrico is the for those of you who don't know is the captain of the Bravo team and he managed to survive for more than a day in the mansion so he's got that going for him but and maybe he would have survived if he wasn't shot there who knows so now we're going to head back through this door and head towards the elevator we don't have to worry about more enemies here they're, they're gone we don't have to deal with any hunters so let's take care of the elevator now check the panel and we'll combine the cylinder with the shaft and that will get the elevator going but we need to input 
a passcode and the passcode is 4231 that's the order in which you need to press the buttons here oh damn it and I messed up I'm sorry that was a mistake on my part I, I wanted to press too quickly and I pressed the wrong button so let's try to do this once again very slowly here I don't want to mess up again sorry about that but like I said the combination is 4 2 3 and lastly 1 and now let's head towards the elevator this is a new section of the caves that wasn't present in the original game Jill! Barry? Thank god you're safe! You too Jill a noise I heard brought me down here, but I didn't expect to find a place like this. Have any idea as to what might be at the bottom? There's only one way to find out. Sound. It could be a person. Jill, go check it out. We had enough surprises for one day. I'll stay here and secure our escape route in case something happens. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not a person, and honestly, Barry, why don't you go? I mean, if I was Jill, he has a magnum, probably one of the most powerful weapons in the game. He should be the one and inspect this area, but I don't know, Jill just obeys to everything Barry says. So there's Lisa Trevor once again. You have to make sure you move to that side so that she appears. And that way you'll have a clear path towards the next room. In fact, in this area we'll play a little bit of cat and mouse with Lisa. You see, you need to clear a path towards the this room and then later on into the other areas as well. But if you take a wrong turn, you'll be caught by surprise by Lisa. And you don't want her to smack you because if she does, she'll deal heavy damage to Jill. So this is the first room and we're safe, she doesn't follow us across the room and we're going to drag this big crate into that elevator right there make sure that you pick up the magnum rounds on top of those crates and also the battery pack you don't need the handgun magazine but if you absolutely must have it pick it up as well and now that we got the elevator going, we're once again going to turn around and once again we're going to play cat and mouse with Lisa. What we're going to do is head down and make sure she appears on the screen and after that we're going to turn around and run away. So just climb down these steps, wait here, there she is. And now as soon as she appears you, you are clear to go. Like I said, if you take the wrong path, she will most likely catch you off guard and smack you and you don't want that Barry! I do admit my feelings were hurt by this Barry I'm very disappointed I forgive him but that's the ultimate betrayal, no doubt. We'll learn about his reasons later on, but nonetheless it makes me sad when Barry just takes off leaving Jill behind like that. Then again it's her fault for wanting to go check the area on her own, but oh well. So push this crate into that hole.
And now we're going to use the compactor to smash the crate. And we will collect the broken flamethrower that was inside. And now once again we're going back to the area where Lisa is and we're going to try and lure her away from our escape pet so that we can get out of the caves and as soon as we get out of the caves well we won't have to come back here like I said in the original game you had to go through the caves in order to access the laboratory but in the remake it's not like that you actually have to go back to the mansion so we're going to use the same strategy here go through this side there's Lisa wait for her to follow you we want to make sure that she's following Jill otherwise she might catch us by surprise oh boy she's right there pull this lever don't forget to pull this lever otherwise you'll have to do this all over again and we're going to place the flamethrower right there. Come on, Lisa, where are you? Oh, there you are. Never mind. And now we're going all the way around. Through this side. And we're going to place the flamethrower here to unlock the door. And we can escape. And of course, I'm not looking in the right direction. This game can be a little bit annoying with that. But let's go through the door. And we're almost out of the caves and almost and this segment is almost over. This seems to be Lisa's room. That's a lot of candles. And at this point I have to assume that the person who was litting all the candles had to be Lisa. I mean all these candles are lit. She's the only well humanoid around. So she has to be the one who's who's litting the candles on and maybe she that's her hobby you know i mean she's been stuck here for like at this point it would be 30 years i think since the game takes place in 1998 and she was brought here in 1967 so she's been here for 31 years by now so she has to pass her time somehow but i guess that's her, her job lit candles that could be worse So in this document we find out the tragic story of of Lisa and we can see we can start seeing how the virus takes control over her even though she would be probably 40 or something by now she has the mind of a child and obviously the virus kind of destroyed her brain that way And I think actually Lisa, the virus that they gave to her was the virus that was used to create Nemesis, you know, the main boss in Resident Evil 3. So that's actually really interesting. But this just shows how tragic her life was. And it's really sad, I mean, that the... It just shows how evil Umbrella is really to use a, a little girl as a test subject. It can't really get any worse than that and obviously she didn't deserve what what happened to her and that's why I always feel that Lisa Trevor is a very tragic enemy in the game because it's not like she's out to kill you necessarily in fact one thing that's always puzzled me is that she doesn't kill Jill or Chris the first time that she encounters them. She knocks them out and they're apparently knocked out for a good time. But then she leaves and comes back. So even though obviously she can kill you in this game, it seems very strange that she wouldn't kill them on the spot. Oh, there's our friend. The friendly zombie. And... Trust me guys, he, he doesn't want to bite me, he just wanted to say goodbye because I, he knows that I won't be passing through here again in this game, so he, just, he was just saying goodbye really. I think I'll call him Fred. 
I think that's a good name for him. Fred the Zombie. That's what we should call him, no doubt. So we're heading all the way back into the mansion, but there's just one more room that we need to explore before we leave the mansion and before I end this section. And that's the room that I, on the previous segment, I opened that room with the emblem key that was in the jewelry box. And that's the room that we have to explore. And this entire section, we won't need to revisit it anymore. So, job well done if you survive the caves, no doubt about it. Like I said, yes, there wasn't a lot of action going on. But knowing that Lisa is right around the corner can make the environment a little bit tense. Make sure you pick up the stone and metal object, we'll need it. And now, as we step through this door, don't forget that there's a hunter here in case you didn't kill it. And now we're going inside this room. This is the door that I unlocked, like I said in the previous segment, with the emblem key. We need to turn on the light in this room. So let's do that. Open the drawer and decide there are a few shotgun shells. Very useful. And now pick up the metal object. And now we're going to combine the stone ring that we got from Lisa's box with the metal object. And now we have everything that we need to access the laboratory. But that's going to be for the next segment, my friends. We are getting very close to the end of the game at this point. So I hope you found this segment useful. Again, thank you so much for the support that you've been giving to the series. It means a lot to me. Thank you for all the likes and comments. And in the next part, we're going to confront Barry over his very strange actions. We need to find out what's going on with him. But that this concludes this episode, so I'll see you all later. Take care, my friends.